Hi, did the Lord Jesus Christ die for every person in the world? Even a person who never received him or will never receive him? Watch this short video. Now I'm Dutch and I grew up right in the middle of Calvinism. I grew up right south of all of those tulip fields. At the end, I will share something really interesting about John Calvin and Martin Luther. Not King and the other one, the monk. As I said, I grew up in Holland, riding between Dordrecht, where they came up with those five points of Calvinism, and Oudewater, where Jacobus Arminius was born. Now, don't try to pronounce these Dutch cities and names. You will probably hurt yourself. Leave that part up to the Dutch experts. I also grew up south of the tulip fields and went to a very strict Calvinistic school in Gouda, where they have the Gouda cheese, or you guys call it the Gouda cheese because it's very, very good. You should try it. By the way, I'm in no way affiliated with the Gouda cheese industry. So enough of my Dutch credentials. Did Jesus die for everyone? Well, we can listen to a lot of theologians which can help you answer these questions, but the best thing you can do is go right to God's Word, the Bible. God's Word is true. They are the very words of God Himself. You would think that He would know the answer to that question. Probably the most famous verse in John 3.16. It starts off with, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shouldn't perish but have eternal life. The word for world there is cosmos, which refers to all humanity. Now that should settle the question, especially since right before that in John 3, 14 and 15, it gives such a clear picture on that very question. Now watch this video for more information about that. Let's go to 1 Timothy 2, verse 4 through 6. It shows that God wants all men to be saints and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And then in verse 6, it shows that Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all. Now, all means all, and that's all that all means. And that's all I have to say about that. Now, the final verse I would like to share is just super clear. It is 1 John 2, verse 2. I share that with a lot of people there in Gouda in the Calvinistic College, while eating cheese, I'm sure. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word propitiation means satisfaction. So God is satisfied with the payment that Jesus made for the sins of mankind. The obvious application, are you satisfied with what Jesus did on the cross for your sins? If you trust my Savior, you will have eternal life. It basically means that you need to agree with God on this, that He is your Savior, that Jesus died on the cross for you. It's not by your own good works. It's only by Him. You'll never be good enough to go to heaven. So it's only by what Jesus did on the cross. You can even smash the like button a hundred times and you will not be good enough to go to heaven. Do smash it right now though. Just once is sufficient. Now, what happened with John Calvin and Martin Luther? They used to argue with each other and they went at it really hard. Because believe it or not, Martin Luther was a five-point Calvinist and John Calvin was just a four-point Calvinist. They would argue about this very point that this video was made of. Now, if they only had YouTube, they could see this video. You could send it to them. You could share it, like you probably need to share it with others. Now, imagine the discussion. You mean you believe that Jesus died on the cross for everyone? I don't think you're a full-blown Calvinist. What? I'm calling the police. I am a Calvinist. My name is Calvin. They named it after me. You obviously didn't get the L point. Yeah, right. You mean the loser point? Hey, whatever. Thank you very much. <laughs> whatever. So smash the like button. Share the video. Let me know what you think about this issue in the comments. God bless you. Bye-bye.